right now on Upfront. Going to the movies. Here's the stat that I should tell you about. You know, people say, oh, they don't want to go to the movies anymore. It's Oscar Sunday, the movie industry needing a major rebound from the pandemic. So is it happening? Our guest this Sunday, Greg Marcus, president and CEO of the Wisconsin-based Marcus Corporation, one of the biggest movie chains in the country. Then TikTok responds. Could they use TikTok to control data on millions of users? Uh, yes. Growing bipartisan calls to crack down on the popular app. Senator Tammy Baldwin backing a new bipartisan bill. Congressman Mike Gallagher promising new hearings. Can you guarantee that the Chinese government has not accessed any U.S. data? The company's head of policy communications for the Americas is here responding one on one. And Wisconsin going big in Texas. A delegation this weekend at South by Southwest. The head of Summerfest Tech takes us inside the new pitch. This is Upfront with Jaron Jordan and political director Matt Smith. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us. It's Oscar Sunday right here on ABC. New data just out is revealing the state of the movie industry. Unprecedented economic headwinds coming out of the pandemic and the nation's fourth largest movie theater chain, the Marcus Corporation, is based here in Wisconsin. Those new numbers out Thursday show the U.S. lost more than 2,100 movie screens since the pandemic, and the average ticket price nationwide rose to $10.53, up from $9.16 in 2019. No one sees the firsthand impact more than Greg Marcus, president and CEO of the Marcus Corporation. One of my biggest questions is this thought of, are movies and is this experience of going to movie theaters, are we back? We're back. <laughs> it feels good. It, you know, look, at, we, I've been watching a progress go along over the last few years, and it just keeps getting a little better every year. But all of a sudden, when you watch the Super Bowl, you see the ad for Air, the Nike movie that's going to be coming out, and you see all the, mov all the movies that are being promoted on the Super Bowl. You said, you know what? Hollywood's back with us. We're in, and people understand that this is a great experience. As president and CEO of the Wisconsin-based Marcus Corporation, Greg Marcus oversees the fourth largest movie theater chain in the country, operating more than a thousand screens across 84 locations in 17 states. Let's talk about the revenue that we're seeing in 2023 as we wrap up quarter one for Marcus. You know, very positive. You know, look at last year at this time, we were dealing with, you know, Omicron and what was going on with that. We, you know, but, but we, Here's the stat that I should tell you about. It's the most interesting. You know, people say, oh, they don't want to go to the movies anymore. Last year, our revenues were down 35% from pre-pandemic. The number of movies released were down 35%. What does that tell me? It tells me people want to go if we give them the product. Now, Hollywood got behind because they put a bunch on the streamers. That, you know, it takes time to make the product. And like every supply chain on Earth, it was broken up and it slowed up the production of movies, but it's picking up and now, and if you think about what just got released in the first quarter, to your question, so many good movies that were just, were, okay, you had Avatar, that's the big, big mama, right? But you had Megan, and A Man Called Otto, and Missing, and Plain. You know what? A great, all great little two-hour vacations. The Marcus Corporation just released its 2022 financial report. Revenue from Marcus Theaters up 50% compared to 2021. Attendance up 47%. And the environment is still increasingly competitive. Are there some new things that Marcus is even working on for moviegoers as they continue to come back to theaters? Sure. Well, you know, we've the, the newest thing we did, which is really fun and, and really timely, is we introduced a thing called our Passport Program. And it's some technology, basically, that allows you to buy like a series of films to, so for example, we did, we started with Kids Dreams. And so for a low price, it was, uh, you know, I think we were $20, you could come see an unlimited number of these movies on Saturdays, Kids Dream. Now, we also did the Oscar series. So you buy our passport, the Oscar passport, it's on your phone, and you can come see for $40, you can come see every Oscar movie, every, every Best Picture nominated film. Talk about tickets and what we've seen in terms of increased ticket prices. Have they increased since the pandemic? Well, yeah, they, ha they have. We're being cognizant. Look, we're trying not to increase them too much because we want to attract the audiences back. But look, at like everything else, we're dealing with inflation. You know, we are in a service business. We're trying to take care of people. And the cost of labor has gone up just for our businesses, as have everyone. And we have to be able to cover that cost. And so we've had to have modest increases. I'll tell you one thing that we are seeing, too. People really like to see what we call 
premium large format, the ultra screen, the super screen, and they, there's, we've seen a lot of people who want to actually pay more, and they're treating themselves. Maybe it's been the, the number of years of isolation, and they're back out again, and they're like, I'm out, and they're hitting the concession stand, and so we're seeing more activity at our concession stands and our food and beverage with our pizza and our Zafiro's pizza and our, and our smash burgers. We're selling a lot more of that. AMC, the nation's largest movie chain, recently unveiling a new pricing plan that sets ticket prices based on seat location, like at a concert or sporting event. Is that a smart move? Well, I, I, I don't know. Let's, we're going to find out. You know, I mean, it does happen. It's not like it doesn't, it doesn't happen. You know, you, you pay more depending on where you're sitting in a, in a ballpark, uh, at a basketball game, at a concert. So it's not unheard of, but we haven't done it. But as I said, we've had matinee pricing forever. There, there, is price, there are different prices at different times, depending on when you go and when our demand is. And so that's, that's not really new. The one thing, and, and again, the, the type of movie hasn't been priced differently. I never, that may happen one day. That, that you, if you go back, way, way back, different movies had different prices. So it wouldn't be new if that happened. But we look to the, your question of how do we determine our pricing. We have to look at what other theaters are charging. We have to look at what the price is at home, you know, to watch something at home and be sensitive to that. But we also have to look and say, what is the price to do something else when you go out at night? People always forget. It's very easy to default us to saying, well, I'm comparing you to my television set. That is a point of comparison. But really, well, what is the cost to go out to an expensive dinner? What's the cost to go to a ball game, to a concert? And we look at all those things and then triangulate. And again, we want to be the, the least costly form of out-of-home entertainment. Okay, so uh, let's talk about things outside of the theaters. You know that uh, Mark is obviously involved with hotels and resorts as well. What's the outlook for that, uh, again, as we look into 2023 and forward? You know, that, the, the good news on the hotel business is that we actually, just last year, we announced our earnings just recently. We are doing, we, we are better than the pre-pandemic years. We had a record year last year. That business is back, and that's, that's what gives me hope for the theater business, too. It shows people... People don't want to sit at home by themselves. They want to be out. And the kind of properties we have lend themselves to both business travel, but also to, to people looking for a leisure destination. So the Pfister Hotel, the St. Kate Hotel, those are business hotels, but they're also, they offer more. I call them special assets. The Grand Geneva, same thing. Yeah, do you look at it hand in hand as you look at you know, the theater industry as well as this uh, you know, hospitality specifically at hotels and resorts? Yeah, but actually, and what I like is that the diversity is helpful because what happens in the hotel business, it is very economic, GDP dependent. If the economy slows down, we can feel it in the hotel business. Theatrical almost is a little bit counter-cyclical because if the economy slows down, once again, going back to that, well, I guess I'm not going to go to that concert because I don't want to spend that money. Let's just go to the movies. And so the movies tend, six out of the last eight recessions, movie business got better. Marcus Hotels and Resorts now actively working to be a key player during the 2024 Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, just as the company would have been for the DNC in 2020. Look, at as being the, the largest supplier of lodging in, in, in Milwaukee for sure, and really southeastern Wisconsin, we are actively involved with it because that's going to fill our city. And it's whether it was the Democratic convention or the Republican convention, it's really, that exposure is really good for our city. It's really not about the convention itself, which I, it's, it's, it says to the world, we're a big league city. We can handle a Republican convention. We can handle a Democratic convention. We can have the whole world's eyes on us. And that will be great for those few weeks that they're here. But for us, what we think is the most important is what it's going to mean for the next few years as we open up this new uh, expansion of our convention center and we show the world what a great place Milwaukee is to live, work, and play. A great conversation with Greg Marcus. He says he anticipated yeah. a continued increase in business travel this year and more films coming from the studio. All right, coming up, TikTok responds to growing calls for a nationwide ban, including from Wisconsin lawmakers. TikTok's head of policy communications for the Americas is here next.